Hello guys, Kelly here again from Kells Aquariums. Have a look at this tank. Have a look at me. Odessa's all uh, schooling about. It's, uh, it's going well. Done a bit of stuff with the uh, sump. Not much. Done a bit. I'll show you in a sec. And I've also done a bit with um I've well I've added a reef link to it so I can actually control the flow a lot better. So yeah. There's the tank I'm having a big go around it. I'm just having a quick look. A lot of uh, plants at this side because I say the reef link's working so I've actually got a bit more flow through the actual pump. The pump's a beast. I've got a Ecotech Marine M1 and I'm using it at virtually no power at all, <laughs> virtually no flow in comparison to what it can actually do. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look around there because there's not much to see apart from these lads who I can't actually focus on properly because they're too fast. <laughs> they're a lot of fun though, so it's a mixed bag in it. But yeah, so we're going to go around the other side and have a look at the sump and the software and the pump, so I'll be back in a sec. Hello, so I ain't quite made it to the <laughs> the sump, because he was just poking his head out of me, uh, my little cave I built him. So he's doing alright, seems to be anyway, I'm probably going to scare him by getting low and down here. But yeah, there's my little uh, leopard frog pleck. He's just having a knock about, he loves his tube, he's never not in there now. Apart from as soon as the lights go out, then I don't know where he is because I wish it's too dark to see in the tank and he ain't in there anymore so that's all good because you know it means getting about <laughs> so the Corys, uh, Corys, I ain't got any Corys in here the little Odessas in here are doing good as well I'll just try and, uh, I'll try and have a quick look at them they're all sort of here there's 12 more to go in the big tank there and they're all doing alright tiny in comparison with the ones that are in there. I know that sounds weird because the other ones are only a month older but I don't know if they're a month older, they've just been fed better obviously. In the shops they never feed them quite as much as you do at home generally so. But anyway, I'm going to move along to where I actually said I was going. So this tank's still going sort of alright as you can see. Got a bit of real wood over there for him to suck on. Uh, it gets fed rapashi. Bottom scratcher and they get a mixture of all sorts of little pellet food so it's all good. So sump side, as you can maybe see the uh, moving bed is moving we'll have a bit more of a look at that in a sec but yeah what I've done is I've took the big black sponge out that was uh, dividing it because it was taking up so much space um, and I've just got a small piece in the uh, out floor I have ordered some like really fine egg crate stuff you know like plastic mesh I'm going to use that in a few places around the the thing, so I won't need as much big lumps of black sponge which gum up. But there's 10 litres of K1 in there, and now I've opened it up so I've got all that extra space, I reckon I can fit another farthing. So I'm going to bang it in, because we don't mess about. We don't do things by halves. Sorry, I've got some buckets of wood. Who even has a bucket of wood? Me, this guy. That post there kills me for making the videos of the sun. But it's alright, so I've also put a few bags of the ceramic media in with the return. So they're the very that should be the cleanest water. So I say I'm hoping that my moving bed becomes my main source of aerobic bacteria and that I, the anaerobic starts to go in, you know, these big deep beds of sintered glass. So just a quick look up there. Ooh, bit of action. But yeah, so other than that, nothing's happened, but I say, and I've moved some uh, some of the air pumps around, air stones, so it bubbles up reet. We'll have a look at that, and then we'll have a look at the software that's running the pump, because as you can maybe see, it's firing a bit of air, a bit of uh, water out. Now, it's it's a beast, is the M1. See, I talked about it in the last bit, but that M1 pump, what's in there, so you have Ecotech M1, it's an 80 watt pump. And I've calibrated it and I'm using like 15 watts or something like that of the 80 odd and it's enough to you know drag quite a bit of water well as you can see the outflow up there 
that's not messing about I mean, it's reaching right across a far footer and it's probably <laughs> you know it's very low so what I've done is calibrated it and now I only use a specific amount so instead of it being from 0 to 80 on the wattage of the power and the amount it's pumping I've got it so even at 100% it's only using 20 watts of the power which means when I make a program when I put the program to 100% it's only technically still you know 20 watts instead of 80 watts because I've because if you put it on full whack I mean it would drain this sump in a second I mean I could have easily done the S1 which is the small um, but at the time I thought well if I get a bigger one I can always get a bigger tank but to actually get the benefit out of that I think I'd need like like a 20 foot tank <laughs> or I'll be pumping the water for you know quite a long way right I'm going to move about so as you can see this is the uh, where the water flows into the socks you can see a good bit going in it goes through them two then through the bottom of them two and into this one here which is the last one the sort of polisher as you can so hopefully see there see water coming in quite nice and it up oh, then it flows down oh, from behind this back sponge that's my shrimp catching net you see that's why it's here a little round them but it goes through that hole and goes through all this bio media and we're doubled up you know, took loads of bags of it, all the different cans, uh, Ciparax, Matrix, uh, Biome, Substrat Pro, got it all, give it all a go. And then it goes into this big moving bed, just say it's got 10 litres of the K1 Micro in, and as you can see it's bubbling up nice, chain it up, cooking a broth. And then it goes into this one at the end, which has got another load of bags of Ciparax and Biome, got the pump in, got an eater, got two eaters under there. I've got four of these, I don't know if you can see them very well. Four of these uh, bubblers. And it's all going well, that's the bit of black sponge I've put in just there instead of having that big bit, it's just in the uh, in the gap there. So that's it really. Thanks for watching. This fathead says goodbye. Yeah. Look at the state of him. How did, how did nature create that? Right, so you'll have to bear with me if this looks terrible because it's just the computer. I've got a, comp a laptop near me tank to mess about with these things. I do it all from a main computer in my pit because obviously the Ecotech um, Reef Link, the good thing about it is you can run it from anywhere in the world as long as it's on wireless, you know, in your house. I can log into this from work and I can mess about with my pump and all that so what you've got on this side here is all the different settings for the Vortec you know like constant speed, I've just got on 15% constant speed but it can go to short pulse, gyre, reef crest, lagoon, nutrient transport, tidal swells you know there's loads of the expanding pulses, feed mode feed mode's good, I've got it on my phone as well so I just walk in, press feed mode on my phone all my pumps drop to 20% of what they're running at now and I can feed and the food goes near where I actually want it to go instead of just blowing all over so that's the Vortec this is the worst laptop in the world well it maybe isn't but it's horrible so now this is my Vectra pump so there's loads of stuff you can calibrate it over here like I've just mentioned or I mentioned before and uh, there's loads of stuff you can do in there set up different settings but this bit here is what I've been on about so there's a there's a, a graph there so come on it's dying inside I'm trying to run this and do a video at the same time so basically what you've got there is the power of your pump down the side and the time along the bottom so basically man's at 70% 75% sorry 70% 70 of its the hundred percent that I've set up on the calibration, not hundred percent of the pump, and it's that until just there with me. It tells me the time when I over until half six, and then it goes up to from seventy, slowly builds up to half seven to eighty-five, stays at eighty-five till nine, then comes back down over here to back to seventy at te half ten, and then carries on seventy all the way through. And up here, there's some nice touches. So it's saying I'm using eighteen watts of power currently. And you can, I know this is a bit dull, I do apologise, we'll come to see fish, aren't we? But um, if you press power report, it'll give me, like, the day's use of power and stuff like that. So, oh, it's a very low graph, what? 
because it's only eight, it's only it's under 20 uh, 20 watts and it goes up to 80 but anyway enough of that I say this computer is doing well at the minute it's got all my readings for everything on I've gone technical <laughs> if I click that if I click it and not not mess up all my uh, other stuff comes on for my uh, Senai which is in the sump but we'll have a look at some fish because this is a bit dull in it back on the tank so as we can hopefully see there there's a big fat head in his cave as normal there's the shoal of there uh, or the school of these little lads so for anyone who wants a school in fish what most people don't seem to have you know every, I mean don't get me wrong I'm not wrong I'm rumming those tetras for schooling they're a beast but um, I'm a fan of the Odessas. They're the Larry's fish I've ever had. I find it hard feeding all the other fish because they get to everything before anything hits the deck. I've got to feed them at this side and then put some in at this side for the other fish to have or the cat, you know, get it. But they've started to learn now as well, so they're just bad. Bad fish. <laughs> but nah, I'm a big fan. I've been constantly digging shrimp out of my uh, sump. The little ones that I got the other day, which I say I got, I say I got a blue one, and, you know, a couple of others, a couple of loads of little um, amanos, and they're actually small enough to go down the pipes, which they keep doing. And don't get me wrong, they live in a filter sock down there until I drag them out. I drag them out every day, or every day or so. But if you think about it, it's still full of water. It's not like it's flowing through real hard, you know, because at the top there is still, you know, it's still full of water. You know what I mean? There's quite a lot in there. It's not like they're getting drips on their head. And it's full of all the muck that they like to eat and all the excess food that goes down the returns and everything. So they're actually pretty happy. I don't think they actually want me to drag them out of it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing it. But yeah, so there's the tank. Now it's really changed. I'm looking forward to getting me... Uh, look, there, see, you can see all these at the front of the glass waiting to be fed. Let's just move around here a bit. I'm going to have to go at a weird angle. But look, they're exactly the same. Just greedy, greedy fish. Look, because I'm here... They're all just at this side, just waiting to be fed. They're never not waiting to be fed. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward to the day when that tank isn't there. You know, so I've just got me, uh, just me main tank down here with the fish I want in it. But yeah, as you can see, nice schooling fish. Everything's going to plan at the moment. I say the, there's more flow going through the filter. Um, you know, quite happy. So, let's have a look at that little fat cory there. <laughs> Got my screw cumbers in because I say I feed a lot of rapashi food. For those who haven't used rapashi, it's a sort of food mix you mix yourself. And um, you just mix it with hot water. And I tell you what, the fish love it. All of them have learnt that it's there now. I used to do it just for my bottom feeders, but now the the rosy bar, eh, sorry, rosy, the cherry barbs, which we're looking at now, they will not leave it alone. They're the first ones on the rapashi. That's, I think, the biggest source of what they eat. Um, and they're awesome little fish. Again, if you want a, again, if you don't want tetras, and you want barbs, whoa, what's happening there? They're a really good fish to have, the, the cherries. Only grow, you know, three of three centimetres, three and a half, something like that. Same as most of your little tetras. Not not violent in any way, apart from males will tear chunks out of each other. I've actually seen them rip scales off each other, which makes me smile a little bit, but you know. They're having, just having a good old fashioned rook over a bird. <laughs> right, we're gonna have one little look in the sun, put the bubbly bits, and then we're done. Because, you know, I'm just rabbiting on for the sake of it, I think, you now. Because I can't focus on these. <laughs> 